Hello everyone, I'm Shinji Kotsuki from Chiba University in Japan. And today I'm going to talk about the development of the portable uncertainty algorithm in our group. So in our group, we have been working on the atmospheric relational system, and which is running with JAXA's supercomputing system currently. And today, so we would like to share the land atmosphere coupled data simulation using this become LTTF system. And in our group, so we are using the ensemble transform karma filter. And this ensemble transform karma filter is a kind of ensemble karma filter. So in the ensemble karma filter can produce the posterior analysis ensembles by combining the observations and the ensemble forecast. And there are several solutions to produce this analysis ensemble. And this ensemble transform karma filter can provide analysis ensemble as a combination of the um, forecast ensembles represented by the, this uh, ensemble transform matrix. And we are using this ensemble transform karma filter because of several reasons. So one is uh, this is a widely used ensemble karma filter in operational numerical prediction centers in JMA or DWD or ECWF. And also this can be easily extended to the several um, extensions, such as the hybrid backlighter covariance or local particle filter with Gaussian mixtures and the parameter estimation and land atmosphere couple data estimation and observation impact estimates as known as the EFSO or FSOI. And because of the limited time, today I would like to explain our research on land atmosphere coupled data estimation. Okay, so let's get started. So this is a um, well-known the Kalman filter equation. So we would like to get analysis by combining the observation and the forecast. And usually in the numerical wizard prediction research, so we consider the so-called weekly couples data estimation. So in this case, atmospheric observation is used to update atmospheric variables, and land observation is used to update the land variables. And uh, during the forecast, so this atmosphere and the land process uh, interactions and uh, land observation impact atmosphere variables via subsequent forecast cycle. And, but uh, in the data simulation cycle, there is uh, no feedback from the atmosphere to land or land to atmosphere. So that's why this error covariance is assumed to be zero between the atmosphere and land variables. And this study, so we extended to the strongly coupled data estimation. In this case, we consider the error covariance between the land observation and atmospheric variables and uh, atmospheric observation to land variables. So it means uh, we would like to use atmospheric observation to update land model variables and land observation to update the uh, atmospheric observations. And uh, we have been investigating how this strongly coupled data estimation is beneficial for with a forecasting purpose. So this is uh, existing the, our data system. So we are using the global atmosphere model called NICAM, and this has a land surface model named Matsilo or integrated land system, which has been developed in Japan. And so this model can provide ensemble forecast, and uh, we have an observation operator for conventional observations or satellite alliances and precipitation observations, and the LETK updates the atmospheric variables. So this is a, like a control experiment. And in addition to the control experiment, we would like to estimate hydrological observation in this study. So for that purpose, so we add an additional observation operator for land surface model. And uh, because of the ensemble common filter, we can develop this observation operator as an independent algorithm from the data estimation of the LETK. And in this study, so we use the relaxation to prior split for covariance inflation. And for the other variables, so we use the 0.95 for relaxation. And uh, but for land variables, so the adding the ensemble forecast is, is was insufficient to maintain the ensemble split of the land variables. So that's why we apply the relaxation to split. Right, the application to prior split with uh, 0.1.00 for land variables. And prior to assimilating satellite observation, so this study assimilated the global uh, soil moisture observation from the geodas. 
So we use the dispersion of the land surface, I mean, the um, model variables. And uh, we assume it is the surface soil moisture, since it can be observable from the satellite. And uh, we see the impact. So this panel shows the uh, bias against the GLDAS of the control experiment and the bias in the soil moisture. And uh, so this um, brown color means that, that our model has drier bias originally, and the blue color means that Matsilo has a better bias. Matsilo is a land soft model, and it has a bias. And uh, we can see the control was drier than GLDAS in brown colored regions. And because of the accumulation of the soil moisture, so this bias can be mitigated successfully. So it means that the Rashmish algorithm seems to work well. And uh, by extending the strongly coupled data estimation, we can also see the mitigated bias against the GLDAS. And uh, but by comparing these two figures, we can see the clear difference between them. And uh, to see the impact of the strongly coupled data estimation, so we investigated the several experiments. So here I'm showing the several like strongly coupled data estimation experiments. So and uh, so first, this first control experiment only estimates the uh, atmospheric observations to update the atmospheric variables. And by extending the weekly coupled data estimation, we assimilate atmospheric observation to update the atmospheric variables and land observation to update land variables. And uh, this experiment is a fully strongly coupled data estimation. So in this case, land observation is used to update the atmospheric variables and atmospheric observation is used to update land variables. But uh, we consider the other experiments like uh, partially strongly coupled data estimation. And uh, as you will see later, so this partially strongly coupled data estimation is what's um, beneficial rather than this fully strongly coupled data estimation. So this um, experiment can be implemented by so-called variable localization. So in the ensemble transform karma filter, we can implement this like combination easily by tuning the only one matrix, like a two control the coupling the data estimation. So this panel shows a global mean forecast to risk difference of the soil moisture. And uh, so this is the error and the time series of the errors. And uh, so this black one is a control experiment. And as you can see, so by assimilating the soil moisture as a weekly coupled data assimilation, we can see the reduced error for the soil moisture. But as you can see, an interesting point is the difference between the block experiment and the margin colored experiment. In the margin colored experiment, so we didn't update land variables, but uh, we use the land observations to update atmospheric variables. And uh, it, by updating atmospheric variables by the land observation, so we can improve the um, forecast of the soil moisture to some extent. Also, interesting thing is the difference between the red card experiment and the uh, brown card experiment. So, here, so red card experiment shows the uh, minimum root mean scale difference against the GLDAS. And this red colored experiment, so we use the land observations to update atmospheric variables, but we didn't update the land variables by the atmospheric observations. So this off-diagonal component means a strongly coupled impact. And uh, we expected so this like off-diagonal component would be beneficial. But uh, in the case of our experimental settings, so this component is beneficial as you can see in the, this first like, uh, difference between the black one and the margin color. But uh, this fully coupled like, data assimilation was inferior to the partially like, coupled data assimilation. And uh, so this is uh, some interesting results. So if we had infinite number of like, ensembles, maybe, in this case, maybe the fully coupled data estimation might be the best, but uh, because of the limitation of the computational resources, so we can employ the ensemble data estimation with limited number of ensembles. So in this case, we might be, we might need to consider this partially coupled data estimation. 
And finally, we also see the changes in precipitation forecast. So this panel shows the uh, precipitation bias against the uh, global precipitation, I forgot about CP, but uh, like global um, precipitation database. And uh, this green card means overestimation and the uh, brown color means underestimation. And uh, we see the some bias against the observed precipitation database. And uh, by the weekly coupled data estimation or strongly coupled data estimation, so we modify soil moisture and uh, due to the input soil moisture, so this part, for example, this part, the so contour experiment has drier bias, but uh, we can increase the precipitation by updating the land variable. And also this region, we have an overestimated bias and that is mitigated to some extent by updating soil moisture. Okay, let me summarize my presentation. So in this study, we implemented the land data estimation into our global atmosphere data estimation system. And we assimilated this, uh, like a GL dust soil moisture as a first step. And we see, saw that the strong way cup data estimation was beneficial for soil moisture and atoms, updating atmospheric variables by soil moisture observation would be beneficial while the updating soil moisture by atmospheric observation is unbeneficial. And the assimilation of the soil moisture reduces the bias in precipitation forecast. Okay, and, uh, and also let me introduce our group too, since this is our first experience to join this workshop. So this year, we have just started the JAXA funded satellite land data assimilation project. And uh, in this project, we plan to assimilate the massive satellite observation by into our, our land surface model named CIVIC, based on CIV. And uh, so we are mainly uh, interested in the hydrological prediction, such as flood and road. And in this workshop, I joined this um, workshop with two postdocs. Who, uh, one is working on the observation operator, and one is um, using land data estimation for inverse problem to estimate atmospheric uh, forcing there. And uh, we had preliminary experiment, and but uh, I'm gonna skip this part because of the limited time. And uh, I have some thought on data estimation over the last two days, and uh, let me share my thought. So this is a schematic image of the data estimation. So data estimation combines the uh, um, observation and forecast to produce a better analysis. And uh, in the atmospheric sequential atmospheric data estimation, so satisfying assumption in DA was important. So one assumption is a no bias between observation temperature. And uh, for that purpose, so we are using the variation bias correction or a CDF matching or a neural network as observation operator or model output statistics. And uh, also regulating the background and observation errors are important. And for that purpose, we are investigating the adaptive inflation localization or to boost rank of the background error covariance and observation thinning or consider correlated correlation, consider correlated observation error covariance. And also the positioning or representative error in R is important. The third one is uh, observation diagnosis, said that to use observation information. So the DLTA's innovation statistics are massively used and also Evaluating the observation impact is also important. And the third one is the nonlinearity and non partiality And uh, in my understanding, so satisfying these assumptions are important to produce a physically balanced analysis, and uh, which is very important for atmospheric data estimation. And uh, I have been working on land data estimation over the last three months, and uh, I have some thoughts on land data estimation. So for atmospheric data estimation, so improving inside state is important and the uh, atmosphere is chaotic and uh, the error can grow easily and the uh, spatial connection is stronger and the uh, human impacts are limited compared to land surface model. But for the land surface predictions, maybe improving the parameters or boundary condition or forcing data might be more important. And uh, we, this process is less chaotic compared to atmosphere and the spatial connections are weaker. And uh, we have been seeing the land data estimation mainly for like to use as a tool of inverse problems to use estimate the model parameters and forcing data. And uh, non Gaussian and non linear methods are used like uh, to apply for the land data estimation. 
and uh, in my experience, so inflating the sample split in the land data, uh, land model would be like a um, difficult issue. And uh, the pattern observation of forcing is the mainstream. And uh, but the, I'm wondering how to inflate the sample split for land model. And also because of the non-chaotic system, so some data submission methods so, such as the FSOI may not be applicable. And compared to the weather prediction purpose, so maybe localization wouldn't be less important. But that maybe such localization technique can be used to estimate the spatially varying parameters. And also, some data estimation may be connected to manipulation problems for the water management or dam operations. Okay, so that's all I have to say. And uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'm very happy to take any questions.